Monday everyone hope everyone's weekend was a swell and a happy Easter if you guys celebrated that together we had a pretty good uh, turkey fry yesterday at home it was amazing and then we'll be turning all of those leftover turkey pieces into soup on Wednesday it's gonna be delicious All right, guys, so keeping it kind of healthy today, and we are going to be doing a variation on spaghetti and meatballs. And we are going to be doing a roasted spaghetti squash instead of doing pasta with this. And we're also going to grind our beef by hand here with my little incarcerum grinder for the meatballs. And then the meatballs are gonna get some roasted garlic and parm in them, and that's gonna be really delicious. One of my favorite, favorite meatball recipes. And then we're just gonna do up a really nice and simple tomato basil sauce to go with. And then classic accompaniment is our kale romaine Caesar salad on the side. And I can't see anyone in chat right now. So give me a sec again. I'm just going to hope that it's not doing the same thing that it did last time. <laughs> Hello. I see you. I see you, Mia, in chat on my phone though again, like why? And of course my phone's at like 26%, so it's not gonna make it through the stream. Just let me grab a charger again and we'll deal with this. Queen. <laughs> Man, I don't know why this thing keeps throwing me curveballs this week. Super annoying. And I'm not going to restart my stream again just for this. I know, Twitch like just hates me lately. I don't understand. But that's fine. We'll, we'll deal with it. Hey, Paul, she made it, dude. Good. I'm happy. Okay, so back to menu. We're gonna do kale and romaine Caesar. I'm gonna be using the kale from the farm. Amazing, and you know what? I just picked a couple of leaves from out back from one of our kale plants. So we have quite a bit of kale to use up today and I'll show you how to prep it so that it's not like super chewy and gross. Cause I know a lot of people don't like kale for that reason. Paul, I'm just getting started. Literally just going over the menu. That's it, dude. You haven't missed much. So timeline, it should take you about an hour to prep all of this stuff, just because this squash does take about 30 to 40 minutes to roast once you cut it in half. And then your tomato sauce, you should let it go for at least half an hour. I would say up to an hour for sure, and then we'll blend it up. And the meatballs, if you're not grinding them, yourself obviously that won't take very long to do probably about 10 minutes to mix it up and then ball it and then about 10 to 15 minutes to also bake it in the oven that's how i love to make my meatballs that way we can kind of control how they cook and it'll be really consistent as well and then obviously lastly the salad should only take you about 10 minutes but we are going to do homemade croutons today as well 
So probably about an hour, maybe more, depending on how quickly you work. But I promise this meal is so, so good. Hello, but good to see you today. Happy Monday. Yeah, so spaghetti squash is actually a little challenging to roast because you want it to be, sorry, tender. But you also don't want it to fall apart, right? So you should be able to scoop it off of the skin and it'll just kind of look like spaghetti. And then it shouldn't fall apart either. So hopefully everything goes well today and I end up with spaghetti squash, not just mush squash. Okay, so order of prep. We are going to heat our oven to 300 Fahrenheit for croutons. We want it pretty low here because we want to also dry them out at the same time as we roast them so that they're not like really chewy when we take them out later on. And I just have the oven on right now. I was just baking off some chicken wings that were left over from the weekend just so they don't go bad. And once those go out of the oven, we will make up our croutons. Nice butt. Good old spring cleaning. Hopefully the weather is good for everyone today. It's quite nice out. It was like minus one again this morning. I don't know what's going on here. Okay, so after we preheat our oven, which shouldn't be very hard because it's already at 400, so it's hotter than we need, we are gonna prep our meat grinder up. So we need to put a couple of the parts into the freezer to get it really nice and cold. And then we also need to prep our beef for grinding. So I bought two little roasts today. So I have to cut them up into about like one to two inch size cubes and then put them into the freezer so they chill off really quick. And that will help to get a really nice grind and it won't go all mushy and sticky. Hey, Fiscal. Glad to see you in here. very warm well that's good for your plants but that's amazing okay after we prep our grinder and our beef we're gonna let those things chill for about 10 minutes we will make up our croutons so all i'm using here is just some like bread ends and crusts that we had left over in the freezer i forget what those are from but i typically like to just freeze whatever bread's left over and then either make breadcrumbs or croutons from it. So we're gonna do croutons today for our Caesar salad. And then we also have to get some garlic roasting and we're gonna do a little bit different today. We're gonna do it on the stove top. So kind of like a confit, I guess, where we're just gonna slowly boil it in oil. Bathroom renos. I mean, those are always fun, though, because you know what you're going to get at the end, right? Like, there's always something looking forward to. Guys, less than a month till we move. It's just getting too real. Okay, once the garlic's roasting, we're going to finally grind our beef and then put that back in the fridge. And then we're going to have to prep up our squash and then our tomato sauce, because those are the two things that do take quite a while to cook. Once those are going, we will start making our meatballs. And then at about an hour out, so probably around 4.45 or five o'clock my time, we will start to roast our squash. 400 Fahrenheit for, like I said, about 30 minutes and we'll check it and adjust our time accordingly. And then we will make our salad in between that time. And then at about 15 minutes out, we will bake off our meatballs and puree our tomato sauce and then at around six we will serve and that's it guys so simple kind of dinner but lots of care put into the ingredients today hey chief what's up man oh posh you've never been in here when we've talked about us moving oh my gosh so we're only moving two blocks away it's okay dude because Right now, we are sharing, Sam and I are sharing a house with my parents since the beginning of the year, and it's like 1,200 square feet, not very big, one level, and we bought something that's like 3,600 square feet for a really good price, 
two blocks away and we are going to take over the basement. There's already a suite set up in there with a full kitchen. And then I will do my streaming from there. It's not the most beautiful kitchen. It's not this kitchen, but it is a kitchen. So I should feel very blessed to even have that, right? And then we'll just make a couple renos as we go. It'll be fun. I'm pretty excited. Okay, so recipes are all posted in Discord, guys. I'm not gonna go over the ingredients, really. I'll just go over them as we make the stuff. But let's do a little bit of history and fun facts before we start. Let's start this week off right. Exactly, as long as I have a stove and an oven, some pans, we're good. Okay, so spaghetti and meatballs. Let's go over this. I'm, I know I'm not doing actual spaghetti and meatballs, but I've never gone over this kind of history yet. So let's check it out. And you know what, before I start, let's not forget my chicken wings in the oven. I don't like dry chicken wings, I want crispy. I think they're good. <laughs> This is what they look like. They're massive. I just seasoned them with some Tony Satchery's. Okay, so it is widely believed that spaghetti and meatballs was an innovation of the earliest 20th century immigrants in New York City. So not actually an Italian thing. It was brought over to America the National Pasta Association is said to be the first organization to publish a recipe for it in the 1920s. Italian writers and chefs often mock the dish as pseudo-Italian or not Italian because in Italy, meatballs are smaller and only served with egg-based baked pastas. However, various kinds of pasta with meat are part of the culinary tradi tradition and it is also done in Southern Italy. Some baked pasta dishes from Apulia in Italy combine pasta and meat where meatballs, mortadella, or salami, yum, are baked with rigatoni, tomato sauce, and matza, then covered with a pastry top. Interesting. I don't think I've ever seen pasta served with like pastry over top of it but I'm sure that would be amazing and that's literally it that's there's not much on it except that it is from the 1920s and I don't think Italians are very proud of it <laughs> yeah exactly but they're upset meatballs and spaghetti not a thing guys now we know or if it is, it will be baked together. Okay, Caesar salad. It is a green salad of romaine lettuce and croutons dressed with lemon juice, olive oil, egg, Worcestershire sauce, garlic, parm, and black pepper. In its original form, the salad was prepared and served table side. I would still love to go eat somewhere that would do that for me because I would appreciate that so much. Like just sitting there, having the person make the dressing in front of you and then toss everything up. Very entertaining. The salad's creation is generally attributed to restaurateur Cesar Cardini, an Italian immigrant who operated restaurants in Mexico and the US. Cardini was living in San Diego, but he was also working in Tijuana, where he avoided the restrictions of prohibition. His daughter Rosa recounted that her father invented the salad when a 4th of July rush depleted the kitchen supply in 1924. Cardini made do with what he had, adding the dramatic flair of the tableside tossing by the chef. A number of Cardini's staff have said that they invented the dish as well. 
That's hilarious. What's up, Beth? Glad you're in here, man. Oh, nice. I'm glad you know this salad background then because I haven't gone too far into it. Obviously, I know the ingredients and how to prep it, but we don't really do much history in like culinary school when we go over this stuff. Lori Ander. Welcome in, dude. My leg today is really bad. I can try to adjust the sound settings right now. Let's see. Is this better? I think it's a little better. So good to see you in here again, Lori. I'm guessing you've been really busy with work. Okay, so Julia Child said that she had eaten a Caesar salad at Cardini's restaurant when she was a child in the 1920s. And it was a huge food rage in Hollywood. So according to Rosa Cardini, the original Caesar salad did not contain pieces of anchovy. The slight anchovy flavor comes from the Worcestershire sauce. That is interesting and I don't know if I believe that fully because I don't find that Worcestershire is like fishy. Maybe they used fish sauce instead. I don't even know. It's worse, guys. Okay, I'll put it back. Every day I feel. <laughs> How about this? Oh no. He's behind you, dude. Welcome in. Never seen you in here before. Aw, oh, Lori. Well, it's okay. Never feel bad. I fully understand the need to sleep. Like, if I don't get seven hours a day, I am a terrible person. Not even joking. Okay, so back to Caesar salad. In the 1970s, Cardini's daughter said that the original recipe included whole lettuce leaves, which were meant to be lifted by the stem and eaten with fingers. Also coddled eggs and Italian olive oil. Weird. That was not what I was expecting for Caesar salad. But that does make sense that they plated it with the whole lettuce leaves because that was like totally trending a couple years ago where people would like grill a romaine have and then just like plate it on the plate like that and you'd get it and you'd be like, what am I supposed to do with this? <laughs> okay, that's it for fun facts, my peeps. And classic today, my chat is not working. Okay, give me one sec. I'm just going to restart Chrome and then bring everything back up and see if that helps the situation. Might have just had like too many tabs open. Come on, Twitch. You averaged five to six hours. Yeah, but you got kiddos. And honestly, I saw the photos that you posted today of but of your little kiddos making Easter eggs. They are so adorable. Like they always look so happy. So good for you. I can tell you're a good mama. Paul, she has sleep apnea, but you said you might get that surgery, yeah? Come on, work, work, work. It still didn't work, I don't think. But that is okay. I will just continue reading off my phone. Sorry, guys. And we will carry on. This is not going to stop us. 
Lori, you're switching from evening to night shift now too? That's totally gonna fudge you up. I don't know if I'd even ever be able to do that. Like, I don't know if my body would actually accept that. <laughs> oh, exactly, yeah. I'm just gonna keep looking off my phone for chat. Just don't even look at me when I'm talking. All will be well. It's true. I'm not opposed to this situation, Lori. I'm quite all right with it. As long as you guys are here, that's all that matters. The show must go on. <laughs> okay, so first things first. Oven on to 300 Fahrenheit. Okay. It says, yo, what's up? I'm ready. So why don't we start by making our croutons? But you know what? We might as well just put the stuff in the freezer for the grinder and then make our croutons. It just makes sense, like timing wise. Because this stuff has to sit for about 15 minutes anyways. So like all of your metal grinder pieces, if you have one at home, should go into the freezer. Let's start by doing this right now. I just have to pick out the die. I think I'm gonna do medium again. I think I'm happy with that. I don't think I want to go really coarse because I feel like the meatballs would be chewy if we did that. He only comes in here to look at me. Oh, thanks. Thanks, he's behind you. Oh, Matt. I'm so happy you're here. I was going to message you today and see how you were doing. Yeah, Squato Correct is real today, guys. On your knees, my dudes. Hey, grinder things are in the oven or in the freezer, not in the oven. Let's deal with our crouton situation. I'm only gonna make enough to fit onto this sheet pan. So if there's left over this, we're just gonna put it back into the freezer. Yes, Polsh. Vote medium. Okay, so I'm happy that you asked about the emote because I literally just got on my designer's butt and was like, yo, like when are these going to be done? Because I still have to get them approved by Twitch. And he said that they will all be done tomorrow. So we have two new ones coming. And then obviously we have to wait to get them approved, which hopefully won't take two weeks like last time, because that was a little bit excessive. I don't see why it took that long for just a little onion. But hopefully by the end of the week, we can start spamming the shiz out of everything. It's true, but... And I don't know if this shows up on your guys' stream, so I just did it this morning, but I put a little extension on so that your Twitch Prime will let you know on my page when it's up, and then you can resub if you so desire. Just so you guys know. That sounds good on your knees. Like I said, never feel like you have to be here. I'm just happy that you guys choose to spend your time with me. Yeah, that's the other good thing about Prime is that you actually get like free games and free loot and stuff like that. Here is the situation right now. Just pulling out some bread crusts. I 
I bean ting. You're hungry. I think that's enough croutons for four of us. <gasps> You're gonna visit Omat this week. Can you guys go out and eat something cool and then do an IRL? Or even just post photos on Discord? Because I would love that. Get some Stroop waffles and some frites or something. Okay, so all we're gonna do, I'm just catching up with chat guys, is just start to cut these down into nice bite-sized pieces. And then we're gonna transfer them onto our sheet pan, which is lined. Oh, okay, death. Yeah, that would make sense why it took so long. I won't ask questions <laughs> about where Omat got his onion from. All that matters is that we have it. I mean, you're tripping out. You're like, whoa, is she miming or something? Cutest little crouton squares ever. A good woman in the kitchen. What about bad women? Are they not allowed in the kitchen? Man, three weeks for an emote? They said like 48 hours. That's why I was like, okay. Ah, oh, sweet butt. Okay, good. I'm glad it's working. Feel like that's going to be a helpful thing. Yes, Stroop waffles. Seriously, my favorite thing ever. Literally, that's all I consumed one day when I was in Amsterdam. Went to the store, got Stroop waffles, and just like munched on them throughout the whole day as I was walking along. They're just too good. Is there any like cheese factories there? You want an onion chomp emote? Like, what do you mean? We should do an angry onion, I think. I know Loriander wanted that one, like the Viking onion. I'm down. Guys, we have a doggo one coming. I think you're gonna love it. It's for sure a posh one. And then the other one is a hype one. So I know you guys wanted that. <laughs> An anti-onion one, yeah. Just for you, but so you can spam it all the time. Cheese factory at his desk, <laughs> gross. <laughs> that under cheese. We don't want Omat's under cheese factory. Want some uh, Gouda or something. Have I ever made consomme and did it go well? Yes, I made it all the way back in culinary school. And you know what? It went well. I think the most important thing for consomme is just to not let it boil. Because once you kind of make your raft, you just want to simmer your stock and then your egg whites and stuff in the raft will help to absorb any impurities from the stock that you're using or making. And then that will help it to stay nice and clear. Because if you break that raft up, then it's going to make it all like milky and cloudy. 
Okay, let's just wipe all these crumbs onto our sheet pan. Crushed it. And here we are. Cretins. Even that's almost too much. You typically only want about one layer of croutons if you're going to bake them. So we'll see how this goes. These are pretty small, so I think we'll be fine. Just they will brown up more evenly that way, right? So we might just have to toss these around a little bit. Oh, nice polish. Honestly, don't feel bad, dude. I don't make anyone sub to my channel. You do whatever you want to do. And I'll still be here. Yeah, that will be the old fort cheese. Okay, so olive oil in the bottle. Give a little drizz. Well, a pretty good drizz, actually, because the olive oil is what helps make croutons taste so good. If you guys were wondering, like, whenever you have a really good crouton, it's like just melts in your mouth, right? It's because they use a ton of olive oil on them. Fat is flavor, my friends. I'll keep saying it. Next thing going on is some dried oregano flakes. Just just enough to cover. We don't want to go excessive on that because it is a strong flavor. And some salt and pepper. Loriander, it's a little bit difficult to make. But judging by your cooking abilities, I think you could easily do it. So salt, we're using a different salt today, guys. You see how much coarse it is in the last one? So we'll see how this goes. Oh, your chili oil would make great croutons, Polish. P.S. How spicy did that even turn out? You know what, guys? I think I'm just going to give these a little tossy toss. These are going to go in the oven. We'll set the timer for 10 minutes and then check them after that. Just to see if we need to rotate the tray or anything. And next up we will cut up our beef. We will never forget about the croutons. The amount of times that I've seen croutons burnt in a restaurant kitchen, <laughs> I can't even count. People just throw them in the oven and then forget about them, right? And then you just smell burnt bread and you're like, oh, yep, those are burnt croutons now. Oh shit, Polish is cooking for a date. Yeah, buddy. Loriander, if you can do beef wellington and béarnaise sauce, I think you can do a consomme. Is the squash roasted in the oven? It is, daddy. 
I will be roasting it at 400 Fahrenheit for about 40 minutes. And I will just be prepping it in a little bit here if you want it to stay and chill. You don't like croutons and you don't like aubergine. How do you not like croutons, Mia? The heck are you saying right now? Does it get crispy? The squash will not get crispy because all we're doing is cutting it in half and then taking the seeds out. And then we're gonna roast it cut side down so that it kind of steams and roasts at the same time. And then it should just come out in nice strands like spaghetti, which is why they call it spaghetti squash. Hey guys, la bouffe. Oh, we went too far. taco shells in the oven is what you forget Paul. hilarious it sounded a little bit weird but i'll just say call call me daddy yeah you guys can start calling me daddy hello cats okay so this is bottom blade pot roast we have 2.6 kilos for $30 here. And they look pretty nice. There's some nice marbling and stuff in there, which is exactly what you want if you're gonna grind up beef. Oh, Mia. If I could cook those things for you, I'm sure you would like them. You're hilarious. Oh, you thought I was going to spiralize it. Nope. We're leaving them pretty much whole. So obviously this is tied. So I just have to take that apart before we cut it down. So much meat death. <laughs> Yeah, you always burn the thing that you have nothing much of, hey? Okay, so I do see there's some interesting stuff in here as I pull it apart. So let's cut into there further and explore if this is like a silver skin or if it's just a fat. Because... Whenever you're grinding meat, you don't, you still don't want to put the crappy pieces in there, right? Because then you're still going to get the gristle later on. So you still have to take care if you're buying whole cuts of meat and make sure you break them down properly. Mia, if you come to BC, of course I would cook for you. And you know what, guys? There is some silver skin, so I'm going to grab my boning knife. Something that can break that stuff down just a little bit quicker. Tada! I'm gonna move my phone over here. Welcome, emotional bird. And thank you. Yeah, I love that knife. So all I'm going to do is make a little slit under the silver skin here. And then start cutting it down. And obviously you want to try and get as little amount of meat stuck on the silver skin as possible. You don't want to be throwing out good pieces of meat there. Unconventional tacos. I like it, Polish. 
I think any taco is like unconventional. I think I'm just going to cut off that whole piece. So it's like all just silver skin. And that looks good to me. You didn't know you were going to learn today, Emotional Bird. Well, welcome to the stream. I tend to think my viewers do learn quite a bit from watching me prep my meals every day during the week. And we like to have fun in here. Hey, so next part. Let's deal with all of this silver skin. And we still have a piece of string here. It's being sneaky. And all I'm doing is kind of just holding the piece that we're taking off and then kind of just pulling it back and letting the sharpness of the knife do most of the work. So I can see that there's a vein right there. So let's go a little bit farther down and then you can see that there is quite a bit of silver skin in there that we'll have to clean out. I don't think I've ever cleaned a roast like this before, to be honest. You hear dog taps. It's true, bird. You got a doggo. How about some chill music in the background? I mean, I can let you guys decide if you want music. Sometimes we have music, some days we don't. But yeah, I let you guys decide that. So if that's what you want, I would be in. So you can see why they tied this roast up, hey? Because it's kind of just falling apart. It's how they sneak good pieces of meat to you or what looks like a good piece of meat. Mama Reagan, what is silver skin? So it literally almost looks silver when you clean it off, it's shiny. And this does not break down in any type of cooking. So it's any chewy piece that you get whenever you eat any type of meat, really. And it doesn't really have any nutrients for the body either. So it's totally okay to get rid of. So this is a really thick piece right here. Really hard, I can't even bend it or anything. So let's try and get that off of there. And all of these scraps that I'm throwing aside, this is what you can use to make a soup with, or at least a stock. And that will give quite a bit of really good beef flavor. So don't feel like you just have to throw this out. Okay, that's our croutons. We definitely need at least another 10. Doesn't look like they've done much in there yet, guys. So we're not gonna show you. You keep seeing the cow thing. I know it's kind of fitting, hey, that the beef one is red. I mean, that's how they color coordinate the cutting boards in most kitchens, actually. You know how to julienne. That's amazing, Mia. I know it is one of my favorite cutting methods. 
But you can just see like how much it is used in everyday cooking. Mia's got onion skills. Well, I'm happy I didn't buy this piece of beef and actually cook it as a roast because there's so much silver skin in there. Probably would have been a little upset. Sweet and spicy. Hello. Welcome. What cut is this? This is a bottom blade pot roast. Not a cut I'm super familiar with. And honestly, I don't think I would ever buy it to actually make a roast out of it, if you guys are wondering. No, thank you. Fat Ugly Ginger with the follow and the sub. Thank you so much. Welcome to the squad, man. And Serena with the follow as well. Welcome. Thanks, guys. Good to see some new peeps in here. Okay, so let's deal with this piece right here. Sometimes you can kind of just pull it apart with your hands like that and then kind of see where this muscle is going to go. The so one really cool part about butchering is you do kind of learn where all of the animal's muscles are. Let's listen to 10 hours of weenie music. Yeah, press one for music, two for no music. Okay, so you can kind of see that there's stuff going all the way through the middle of this. It's an adventure. I'm just kind of feeling for any really thick pieces and then I'll cut those out. The thinner parts, I'm just gonna leave in and then see how my grinder works on those. Yeah, it's okay, Lori, I mean, I don't want to put any crappy pieces into the meatballs though, right? So I hate chewing down on gristle or anything like that. But yeah, I'll definitely save all of the scraps here and then make a stock of sorts one day or just use it for a soup. None of this will get thrown out though, so don't worry. <laughs> I can't believe you guys actually think I say it like that. Like, I don't understand my accent at all to how it sounds to you guys, but yeah, exposed Canadian once again. 
Can't help it. Oh, wrong bowl. Okay, so here's another piece that's kind of coming apart. See where she goes. Looks like this just goes off like this. On your knees, what is Meatless Monday and how do you do that? Can we just make it Meatball Monday instead now? That's way better. This is a huge piece of silver skin here. Do I send my knives to sharpen or do I do it myself? Uh, some of my more expensive knives, I'll send them to sharpen, but I do have a whetstone here. I typically like to just keep a really nice edge on my knife so that I don't have to sharpen it very often. But either or, what part of the cow? So it is a blade roast. So I'm guessing it is part of the shoulder blade. Sweet and spicy. Do I take requests? I do, but typically like to do that either by donation or cheer. But if it's a quiet week, I'll sometimes pick a viewer that is quite frequent in my stream and then let them choose something for me to cook. But definitely, if you request a meal, I always write it down. And then if I have time one week, or if it's something that I'm really into making, I'll for sure make it on stream. Can I give the scraps to the doggos? We don't give her raw food, so I'm not really sure how her belly would react to this. But I mean, we've given her a couple of meat scraps before, but definitely not the amount that I've taken off today. I gave her lamb last time I ground something and she was like so confused by the texture. She's like, what is this? And it's delicious. Thanks, Mad King Matt. Bye, Onionies. Have a good day, man. Okay, how is this one looking? See what they did? Like they for sure didn't clean it properly and then just tie it back up so you would never know. That, that would not cook very evenly in the oven, guys. Oh, it's true, Polsh. You got me there. I would make a broth. But I can pick up beef bones from the store here. They're quite cheap. And they are nice too. Why don't we just follow that slit and cut this all in half. Aw, oh, Mia, just another manic Monday. This piece of fat though, we're keeping in there. Same with all of that. It's just this stuff that I'm mostly worried about. Let's discover what this little piece is. It's just like hanging off. There is some silver on there, but the rest of that is just fat, which is gonna grind really nice. So let's not trim that off. Second timer for our croutons. So look in the other camera. This is where we're at so far. They're drying out nicely. I think about 10 more minutes and we should be good. They're just starting to brown up. <laughs> it 
It's true emotional bird. I literally just made that two weeks ago for Butt Burglar. She requested it. It was so good. But for sure I could do it again or just do a different variation. There's quite a lot of waste. I mean, not too much, Mama Reagan. I could be more picky about what I'm taking off, but like I said, I'm not gonna throw it out. And obviously, if you bought a different cut of meat, you would have a different amount to trim off. So let's just cut this down and see what's going on here. So huge piece of fat right there. And then as you can see, there is a vein running through there where those little blood spots are. So that will be tough. We know that. So like anything that's kind of shiny, you want to cut off. Holy. And there's still the blood in the vein too. All right. All right then. How do I see the difference between silver and fat? Yeah, exactly. So the fat is not shiny at all. And it typically, it does not feel smooth. So if we look at this cut that I just did, the really thick part at the bottom, that's all fat. And then the rest of the lines kind of running through, that's all the silver. So here's a good piece to look at. So there's the silver with the fat on it. You can see how the fat's kind of cakey and then the silver is just really nice and smooth. Do I like foie gras? I do, but not in mass amounts. And it definitely has to be prepared really well. Not a huge, huge liver fan. But every time I've had foie, I've definitely enjoyed it. Sounds good, Posh. Hopefully your date goes well, dude. And if not, we will see you later. Yeah, hopefully we don't see you. <laughs> okay, we're almost there, guys. So you can see how much work it is just to prepare some beef for grinding, which is why sometimes you get beef with all sorts of stuff in it when you buy ground beef. It's like chewy, and rubbery, and the texture's weird. That means they just didn't really care what they were putting in their grind. And you probably have the most cheap cuts in there. It's gonna be a big one. That piece we're just going to cut off and throw in the bowl. Okay, one more piece here.
All right, Ginger, once again, thank you for the sub and welcome to the squad. Hope you have a great night. Fig with the follow, welcome. That was just fat, guys, so that's okay. Just had to feel it up and make sure that I was right. Okay, so this side, see how I can't even pull that off? Ah, uh, sweet and spicy, I mean, it might take you a little bit longer and you might have more waste, but honestly, if you never try it, how would you know if you're good at it or not, right? So this is why I do this stream is to kind of get people less afraid of doing this kind of stuff. Because honestly, this little bit of work is gonna pay off so much when we have our fresh ground beef for either meatballs or you could make burgers even, meatloaf. We did it, we're there guys. So a little bit of wastage, but we have this whole bowl full. I'm just gonna pop that in the fridge real quick and we have two minutes left on our croutons. And then we're just gonna do a little cleanup and we will carry on. Next thing up, is getting our garlic starting to roast on the stove top. So all I'm doing is packing up those beef scraps into a baggie and then I'll make a broth with them at some point. Gotta wash my knife off real quick. do is just take one and eat it. So it's getting there. It's getting crunchy, but still a little bit chewy inside. So let's just bump up the heat to about 325. I'm going to go a little bit longer, but it's super tasty. Use a sourdough. And that was the crust from it, so it's a little bit sour, which I like. Should be good with the Caesar salad. Let's do the timer a little bit less now as well. Okay, 
finishing washing off my knife now that the timer is not being crazy. Croutons in soup. Yes, I'm wearing in. I need delicious. Soaks up all the goodness. Okay, so roasting garlic. Let's do this whole head today. We're just going to need a really small pot for that. And then this is oil that I have used for roasting garlic previously. So I'm going to put that into the pot as well as probably just a little bit more either grapeseed or vegetable oil to help cover the garlic cloves. And we're not gonna stir with that oil. Really, really good to use in dressings or if you're roasting veg, drizzle that on instead of just plain olive oil. Oh, Matt, never be sorry, dude. I don't want to hear those words. Sounds very Canadian. So let's start to break this down. And then we're going to have to peel all of the cloves. <laughs> yeah, but how dare you? Maybe some other day, he says. Okay, that was the oven just saying it's ready. I was gonna, I was just thinking that I was like, is he okay? He's probably just playing games. Hey, so you guys know how it goes. We're gonna start by smashing all of these. And that helps make it really easy getting the skin off. Not even playing games. What? Does butchering my own cut save you money? Yes, it does. It's much, much cheaper to buy whole cuts of meat and butcher it yourself or break it down because you have to think about they're paying that butcher to cut that up for you, right? So you're paying that extra money to have someone do that work for you. But if you can do it yourself, you will save quite a bit. Head is just grinding. My dude. Viyoon, hello. Oh, Matt, did you take the nature bike ride that we told you to take the other day? That will help your grinding head. True, but you gotta take those thinking caps off at night. I haven't really been on Insta today. We did a big grocery shop. 
I'm sorry. What did I miss? Okay, so there's our little garlics. Nice view. Well, at least you're getting something new. Right? That's good news. Oh, yeah. Now look at these. Golden brown and delicious. Just for you, Mia. So let's try another one. Oh, yeah. You want to hear that crunch, guys, or else it's not done. Okay, those can just cool. Sit aside now. And I don't think we need the oven on just yet for anything. So let's just shut it off. And I'm gonna do a quick little switcheroo here. You guys can watch the garlic roast in the pot. You want this on about a medium heat. If we go too high, then the garlic's gonna burn on the outside before it roasts completely. And obviously if we go too low, it's just gonna get really soft and fall apart and not really roast at all. <laughs> yeah, crunchy croutons are nothing. You got lost, Omat? Okay, I need to check this real quick. Holy. That's nice with nature. Do you have a cat? Okay, so let's add a little bit more grapeseed oil into here. And let's throw our garlic cloves in first, just to see if we have enough. Okay, that looks good. And we're just gonna let those go now, guys. Your favorite cat, it looks so cute. I love when they have all those different colors on them. Okay, garlic is going. It is time to grind the beef. So I need to just clear off this area. I'm gonna bring the squashes over because we will be doing those next. Can you let them see squash eating watermelon? Guys, we got some watermelon today. And it is one of Posh's favorite things to eat. So we're gonna do a little bit of watermelon eating with Posh in a sec here. Let's just set this up first. Yeah, whoosh. Okay, so this is the piece. She likes to nibble it off of the rind. <laughs> She's so ready. Okay, come here. Come here. 
Let's back it up this way. Come here. There you go. She's the best watermelon eater ever. <laughs> that's it. We're done. Clean. Like, if that's not clean, I don't know. That's mine? Yeah. Hey. Betty says that's for me. Mmm. Mmm. So good. That's a little bit juicy. Okay. Back up. Okay. All of the grinder parts are out of the freezer. They're super cold. Can't even really hang on to it. First piece is on. Next one is this one. Like that. Next is the spatula, as it's called. And those are little blades, so those always have to stick up. And then obviously our die. And the end to hold everything together. Do a little flippy flip. How does that look? Beef was really nice and cold from the fridge. And obviously, we're going to need a second bowl just for the ground beef to be put into. I don't know if you guys can see this, but the garlic is sizzling. She be going. And the other pieces that we need are these guys. Can we see everything okay? I know you can't really see the grinder. I guess I can probably just turn it around. sense to me, okay? Lancio. <laughs> Pay attention. He's Italian. Watch out, world. Another Italian is in here. Hey, you guys know what's gonna happen when the black gloves come out. So watch out. I'm not Italian. The only weird thing here with this being turned around is I can't see where to turn it on. <laughs> okay, we're on. meat be ground. Yeah. Um. 
garlic is already kind of turning golden brown. It's getting there already. Almost there, guys. You with me? <laughs> oh, Matt. I mean, we're not really deep frying them. More like confit, so like slow cook. Done and done. We're gonna keep this other bowl though still because I think we might need it to mix stuff up. Oh man, Chief, it already smells so good, it's true. Give them a little stir around. Let's unplug our grinder before we go any further. Safety first, guys. And then I typically like to just take off this whole attachment and then take it apart off of the machine. Hello, impossible soul. Hope your weekend was well. My little piece of watermelon with the bite out of it. Very sanitary, you guys. So all we're gonna do is untwist this. It's pretty clean. It was a good weekend, nice. I mean, I'm not deep frying anything today, but we did do deep fried turkey yesterday. I don't know if any of you have had that. It's quite delicious. So as you can see, there's just a couple pieces that were stuck in there, but everything else, it's just a little bit of fat around the edges, so that's good. And then our extruder. So any pieces of fat, it's okay to just put those back into the ground meat. I am just um, roasting some garlic on the stove top. No deep frying though. Just like a slow kind of boil, I guess. And then there is this small amount that does get caught up in the grinder. So just add that into your trim that you're gonna pack away for the broth and then that won't be wasted. Yeah. 
poor Posh just wants some beef. I gave her a little piece earlier. She loved it. So let's just divide this meat between the two bowls so it's not overflowing and hard to mix. I'm just gonna get a little stir on our garlic. Trying to not take my glove off. I think I'm just gonna turn this off. Because they are a really nice golden brown already. So those can just cool off. I think I'm going to take this off just so I can clean up a little bit of stuff, but I'll just reuse it afterwards. Machine can go away. All right, so it's four o'clock. We've made our croutons. The beef is now ground for the meatballs. The garlic just finished roasting. So all we have left to do is prep our squash and our tomato sauce, and then just quickly mix up our Caesar salad. So while the garlic is cooling off real quick, let's prep our squash. So I'm going to use this sheet pan and then also the sheet pan that we did our croutons on. It is impossible, so yeah, my audio is desync just because my internet is terrible here and I cannot help that for now. Less than a month though until we're good. Got you guys. So shall we just transfer these croutons from the sheet pan into the bowl? And then it's time to show the squash who's boss. Ta-da! Just like that. Need to munch one. So crispy and delicious. Okay, so we will need more parchment to roast our squash on. And I probably will be investing in more Silpat sheets. Just because they work so well. I mean, parchment is good, but just wastes a lot of paper, right? Silicone sheets are reusable. You made blondies over the weekend. That sounds delicious. A Middle Eastern squash, so it's not. It's gonna be my take of a healthy version of spaghetti and meatballs. So we're gonna use the squash as the spaghetti part. Cook ramen with some lamb sauce. I love ramen. I've been having a hankering for it lately. So sweet and spicy, the kind of spices that are going to go onto this, I'm going to just keep the squash nice and simple. So just oil, salt, and pepper. Okay. 
And then obviously season my sauce with a little bit of basil. It's definitely a hard squash there, guys. Careful when you are dealing with these for sure. Because this piece right here is like rock hard. I think I'm just going to take it out. I don't feel like chipping my knife any more than it already is. Like that. No, thank you. Literally like a piece of wood. Don't peel the stickers off. <laughs> it's the funnest part. Ramen stream. Do you guys want another ramen stream? I'm down. Microwave it for a couple of minutes and then cut it in half. That's an interesting way, but I'm just going to get a different knife though. It's my method of madness. So a much longer knife and it's thinner so it should go through a lot easier maybe <laughs> not okay sometimes you have to use force but we did it Gravity will do the work for us. And then all we gotta do is scoop all of the seeds out, but we're gonna do that all at the same time. So just set that one aside and we will go on to the next one. Oh my gosh, sweet and spicy. I just did Bravas two weeks ago as well. That's so hilarious that you guys are requesting all of these things that I've already done. I'm sorry, Death. I know it was loud. I had to. A lamb ramen, though. That sounds amazing. Written down on the sheet. You will re you'll rewatch it? Yeah, exactly. Definitely one of my favorite Spanish dishes. And everyone here loved the way that I prepared it as well. Okay, Omat. Stay positive, man, and get some good rest. Seriously, if you need anything, just message me. You know where I'm at. And hopefully see you tomorrow, dude. Okay, next squash is going down. Stay thick. Yeah, the sauce is so good. Okay, that one was easier, hey? Raptor Kai, hello! Welcome in. How's your day today? Okay, last one. Get that rock in motion. And then just pull it and we're good. Crushing the squash like a boss. Okay, just gonna rinse off this knife real quick. Otherwise this stuff is gonna stick on really quick. You've never seen spaghetti squash in Germany. That's interesting. I'm surprised that they're not able to get it there. Or it's just not a thing that Germans typically eat. I really love it. And it's very popular here. Okay, our garlic is really nice and soft. I just had to check on it. Gave it a little poke. Hokkaido squash. I don't know what that is, but I'm going to Google it real quick. I probably know what it is, but it just has a different name. 
Hokkaido pumpkin. Interesting. Those look like they'd be really nice and sweet. That sounds so good, Viewn. Do you usually cook it whole? Okay, all we're doing now is obviously scooping the seeds out. And then you can kind of tell the texture of this squash as I scoop it. So when I say, when it's called spaghetti squash, you can see the strands as I scoop it out. So if you don't overcook it, you can serve it like spaghetti. And obviously it's way less carbs than what the pasta would be. But it sounds so good, Vune. I love squashes and curries. Okay, first one done. I think these will be done in about half an hour. So they're not super big. Yeah, exactly. That's like one of my favorite ways to prep squash is just keeping it really simple like that. Like it's so good with garlic. I typically would put a garlic clove in each one of these halves, but since we're doing garlic in the meatballs, I just left it out this time. Your wife hates squash. That's sad. Maybe she just hasn't had it cooked properly for her yet. It's probably a texture thing more than anything though, would be my guess. <laughs> but is that like you and onions? Because I don't think it is. Nothing worked. See, we've had this conversation before. I know death was there when we were having this convo with someone the other day on stream about people's palates and what they do and do not like and like why it's like that. Hey, okay, so let's get this set up. We are just going to dress the insides of the squash first and then flip them over. See, this is where you could use that garlic oil that we just made and drizzle it on the inside of the squash. But like I said, I don't wanna like over garlic dinner tonight. So I'm just gonna keep this one simple. So just some olive oil and then we'll kind of rub it in. This will help to keep it moist as it bakes. Or you could even just kind of 
tilt your squash from side to side so it evenly coats it. I don't even know what that means, Vune. And I'm not very good at WordPress either. I was gonna start a blog for all of my recipes, but honestly, the Discord was just so much easier. The only thing I've done with WordPress is like a really small little traveling blog of when I went to Europe, but did not do anything else with it once I got back. Just kind of kept it as a log of everything that I did every day. Yeah, Reddit. Reddit would be really good, I think, but. I like just recently discovered how good Reddit is. I don't know why I never used it before. So peppering it up on the inside all nice. And we will probably just be serving our meatballs and sauce in these halved pieces. Just because they are the proper size. Raptor Kai, you're having a late supper. What are you eating though? Trump. You made ramen with pork belly. That sounds proper. I believe that it took five hours to make, if not more. But how good, yeah, how good did it taste though? Everything's slow cooked like that. I know it takes time, but it's so worth it. Okay, just a good sprinkling of salt in each squash. And all we're gonna do now is just turn them over on the baking sheet and then that way they'll kind of steam in the oven. Because otherwise I find that it gets just a little bit too dry if we leave them facing up this way. Jerk chicken and fusilli. Nice. I'm actually doing jerk chicken on Friday. Super pumped about it. Yeah, exactly, Vune. Like, I don't know. It works pretty easily to create a blog for me. But obviously, if you want to make money off of it, you want it a little bit more professionally done. I think I'm just gonna do three squash on each tray. Kind of spread them out so that they cook nice and even. And next up, we will start our tomato sauce, which won't take us very long. I'm gonna switch the camera to full stove top now, guys. Garlic can come off. And we will take out another pot. from there so that the parchment does not light on fire. Obviously we will need two cans of tomatoes because this will reduce a little bit guys. And 
and half of this onion, so not a ton of onion. You made chili oil too? Nice! I actually had another viewer that made chili oil today as well. Yo, dog, can you not? That'd be great. Once again, guys, not my dog. And what else is going in our tomato sauce? So one carrot, diced small. Both things are going to be diced small. And then we're just going to put a little bit of dried basil into the sauce once everything is going. Very, very simple. I know half of an onion, shocking. We're shocked. Maybe some garlic. I mean, I would put it in the sauce, 100% I want to, but since we're doing garlicky meatballs and garlicky Caesar salad, I don't think I'm going to do it. Come on. Good catch. This onion kind of just like cut itself in half for us already. So we'll just follow that. Uh, he actually left Trump, but you might have seen him in here. His name is Palsh. Palsh09. But yeah, he just he just popped out of chat because he's going to get ready for his date tonight. Okay, so small diced onion. Are we ready? Following the natural lines of the onion, always. This one has some pretty good ones. And then also following the curve. Once the end piece kind of starts to fall over, just let it fall over and then we'll continue to cut it on its side. I'm crying a little bit already, guys. And then this end piece, the onion butt, we're just going to discard because it is hard and it won't really break down. Sesame oil, chili flakes, chili powder. That sounds so good. Yeah, it does sound spicy. Oh, Mr. Niner, she's not sad. You know what? She's waiting for a carrot. Believe me, she is not sad. She's just a snack master. Posh carrot chomp. I know, so classic, hey, but. Okay, we're gonna saute the carrot and onion together in the pot. So don't worry about mixing them up. And now we shall turn on our pot put a little bit of olive oil in and we will get this sauce started. And I'll probably munch on some watermelon 
when we got time. I'm gonna take that squash out. I don't trust it. It's too risky. I'm not starting any fires. Okay, guys. A uh, medium heat here is good. Okay, since you guys wanted a little bit extra garlic, I will take some spoonfuls out of our garlic oil to start our sauce. Does that make you happy? Nim, thank you for the biddies, dude. Glad you're in here with us. I just saw your message about your presidential sushi roll. Octopus and crab with tuna and smoked salmon on top with a fresh hot mayo. Sounds very interesting and maybe a little bit difficult to prep. So let me think about that one and I, I should be able to make it come to life. Just might take me a little bit of time to find everything to put into it. While we're waiting, why don't we open our tomato cans? No time to waste. The moussaka, sweet and spicy. <laughs> the moussaka you did, yeah, it was. I actually did not end up streaming that day, but I did make it for my family and it was super good. If you want the recipe, I can give it to you. Because I didn't use my own recipe for that. I actually did use a Greek chef's recipe and it worked so, so well. Okay, I'll, I'll try and make my own version of the presidential sushi roll then, Nim. Okay, our oil is warm. Let's get our veg into there. Sounds good. He's behind you, dude. Thanks for being in here as always. Hope you have a good one. Mr. The Blender is staring at you. I mean, we, we don't use it on stream very much, hey? But I do use it in the mornings. I make a smoothie. You want that sizzle? We'll just give that a little stir. I know lots of people don't love eggplant. I know that. But you don't really taste it in the moussaka. Okay, we're just gonna let that cook down for like five or 10 minutes. I can quickly post it in chat for you guys, the recipe. And it was really good. I liked it because it had a bed of potatoes on the bottom. So that kept it from going like super soggy and watery. And then they also did half and half eggplant with zucchini. 
which I found gave it a much nicer texture. Okay, there you go, guys. It should be there. Yeah. But thanks for being here, but you have a great night. Hopefully your dinner goes well and I'll see you tomorrow. I hope. Uh, thank you, Austin. Okay, so we have a couple more things to prep for our meatballs. So here is some fresh thyme from the garden that I picked earlier. We're just gonna break that down and then we can start to make our meatballs up. Squash things, Finster. You've been in here lurking or did you just get here? Either way, happy to have you. Okay, so just give this a quick little chop and that will help release flavors instead of leaving it whole. <laughs> so lurking. I recommend to get the wok really hot, of course. I mean, woks are like smoking hot, right? I've actually never properly cooked with a wok at home, but I definitely know that you need it quite hot. Just turning on some lights, guys, now that the sun's going down. And let's start making our little meatball mix. So I'll show you the one bowl. And I am splitting my stuff in between two bowls just so it's easier for me to mix. And this will be enough to feed like eight people. Or if you have a family of four, this will give you lunches for the next day. Oh, how would you get it really hot? I guess the best way is to just crank your burner and then maybe throw in some oil and then take the temp of the oil inside and see how hot it gets. Okay, so Next thing for our meatballs, we're just gonna strain out our amazing kind of crispy roasted garlic now. And then we'll just break that up into the mixture as we mix it. And then we're just gonna leave our garlic oil out to cool before we put it back in the fridge. <laughs> Nim. Oh, peanut oil, yeah. Super, super flavorful and delicious, but I know it's a little expensive, but I think it's worth it. Okay, hey, so some eggies, which we're gonna whisk up. And then just a little bit of dried oregano. You could use dried ground thyme in this as well. Just, I have fresh stuff outside, so why not use it? 
Yeah, exactly, Nim. It's so worth it to get that high smoke point. Probably about a teaspoon, maybe half a teaspoon of the dried oregano in each bowl. Okay, Vune. You have a great night. Thanks for being here as always. So we got one duck egg and one chicken egg. So you can see the size difference. This is a pretty small duck egg though, if you guys are wondering. And it's the last one, so sad. Do I ever make Indian food and what kind? Good question, I do. I really love Indian food. I have made on stream, I've done butter chicken. What else have I made? I did a vindaloo with some cashmere rice, so kind of like a pilaf. And I've made naan a couple times as well on stream. So yeah, I do love Indian food. I am open to making any kinds of it. I love spice. I love curries. Yeah, biryani, I think I'll for sure be doing a biryani stream. We made a lamb belly biryani before at work at one of the restaurants and it was amazing. Probably one of the best rice dishes I've ever eaten. And I'm sure I'll remember that one forever. You guys notice the difference between the eggs before I mix them up too? So you can see the chicken white is like more yellow and then the duck white is actually clear. That sounds good, Nim. More duck is required. I know, Finster. We gotta take a little trip out to the shack. Okay, that is whisked up. So I need to split that between the two bowls now. Oh, that's always the worst thing is like when one of your favorite places just goes to crap. You're like, why? You just wanna know what happened. And there is no breadcrumbs in these meatballs today, guys. We're going pure protein. With maybe just a little bit of cheese. Just, just a little bit of cheese. Brand new parm today. I think, yeah, it's meaty Monday instead now, Finn. Let's just be honest. We went from meatless to like all of the meats. Hey, we are almost there. Our onions are just starting to brown up. A couple more minutes on this and then we'll dump the tomatoes in and the basil. I know I should, Nim. I think I'll be doing a lot more variety stuff when I move to the other house. Okay, so just a good handful of parm. Like so.
That's some taste of cheese. I'm munching a bit. It's too good. Oh, really? I mean, you still need to keep your edge on your knife, though, even though you sharpen it. So do you have a steel at all? I think that that is what your problem might be. So this is what I use to keep the edge on my knife. It's a diamond steel, it's Hankel's brand, and I've had this for over seven years now. Super, super good. Costco Parm, it's true fin. This was the first time we bought it. Like 12, was it 12 bucks for that thing? And we like, we usually get like maybe 200 grams for like five bucks. So much better. I'm just gonna go grab some gloves cause we're gonna mix these up right away. And then we are going to pour our tomatoes into the pot. Oh, the beef vindaloo was amazing. Oh God. Yeah, knives in the dishwasher are a no-no. That makes me sad, Nim. First can in. Then we're just gonna bring this to a simmer and let it go until it's time to serve. Do a little handful of basil leaves. Do about a teaspoon. And then we're gonna season it at the end. So just give this a stir to combine everything. Hey guys, last thing in the bowl, obviously we need some salt and pepper to finish these off. <laughs> yeah, at least she knows not to do that with the cast iron. Yeah, that would be uh, tougher to fix every time. Putting that seal back on. Dokes. Okay, these are gonna get mixed up and then I will be putting them on to a lined baking pan as well. But before we even ball these, we are going to check them for seasoning. So you just want to take a little bit out and then we'll just give it a cook and then see how it is. If it needs any extra salt or anything like that. Tear up the garlic if you can, or break it up. It's 
smells super roasty already. So I'm not overworking the beef right now either, if you guys can see that. Just doing the initial mix. Let's do this one too. So because these bowls are separate, we're gonna do two different pieces of meatball tester. Really, Nim? I mean, I typically shop at Costco for most of my meat. And then if I can't get it there, we have a butcher shop called Glenwood Meats, which they are really, really good. All of their stuff is super fresh. But yeah, I, I ground this up myself, Nim, earlier on the stream. I just bought a blade roast and then kind of just cut it into pieces, cleaned out all the silver skin. Really? Even the meat at Whole Foods is old? That's pretty sad. Okay, this is looking good. Just take out a little piece like that. Kind of just smash it down. Make a little burger patty for yourself. And then do the same with the other bowl, just to make sure they both taste at least close to the same. I'm gonna turn our pan on real quick. And let's hope that it doesn't need anything extra. to use this little ice cream scooper to scoop it out. What the heck happened here? It's uh, seen better days though, but we'll see how it goes. Okay, so bottom one is from the left bowl. Let's keep it on the left side other one on the right side sizzling up there while we wait Just munching on some watermelon while we're waiting. It's pretty juicy. And our sauce is almost simmering, guys. And I think I'm going to turn the oven on right away to get it preheating so we can start to roast our squash because our peeps are already on their way. Yeah. 
Give these a little flip. Definitely browning up nicely. Looks delicious. So let's do convect bake at 400 Fahrenheit. Okay, let's do a little testy test. <laughs> I still have my glove on. Mm-hmm. Okay, both of them are perfect. Like seriously perfect. And the meat kind of just like melts in your mouth. Like it's chewy, but not. Yum. And then obviously the Parmesan also helps it to brown up in the oven and keep it nice and moist at the same time. I'm sorry, chosen one. That's typically how it is in the morning if I watch a cooking streamer. I'm like, I'm just drinking my healthy smoothie. And they're making whatever they're making for dinner. And it's like, really? I want that now instead. Okay, so that's good news. Both of our meats are seasoned well. So all we gotta do is start scooping them into our pan. Yeah, happy chef, cough, cough, that crazy guy. It's true, Death, you know it. Okay, our tomatoes are almost there, getting molten. Like tomato sauce is terrifying when it gets bubbling like crazy. It's like lava. So I'm not really pressing this into the scoop too tight. Oh, okay, I'm just gonna have to throw it out. So that's how it should look. We're not gonna form it into a ball any more than that. And this will help it to not get tough when we put it in the oven. How many hours do I spend cooking? I mean, just this amount that I stream. So typically from 2.30 to 6 p.m. So between three and a half and four hours. Some days I do like crazy stuff in stream. Other days I keep it pretty chill. I do like to do a good variety of everything though. So the important thing here is to keep all of the meatballs the same size so that they cook really consistently. So this is where we're at so far. Little chosen one, do I have a list of meals with a good amount of protein? I mean, I can for sure send you something, but typically most of my meals do have a good amount of protein in them. But if you're looking for like breakfast as well, for sure message me and we can talk about what you're thinking.
I did cook in a restaurant before, Impossible Soul. I haven't been in a restaurant since December of last year. And then now all I'm doing on Tuesdays and Thursdays is volunteering at a local organic farm and learning a lot more about that stuff. And it's really nice because I get to take home fresh vegetables every time I go see them. And it gets me out of the house for a little bit. But I have until August to kind of continue this streaming thing. So if by then I don't really make enough money to continue streaming kind of full time like this, then yeah, I'll get a part time job somewhere. I'm sure by that time I would have had a good rest from the crazy kitchens. I love how I'm just like throwing these meatballs out of the scooper. It works though, guys. A lemonade stand of food. I mean, you say that, but seriously, that's what people do, Finn. Like people just sell eggs and stuff from their front lawn here. So I'm sure I could think of something. And then I also do have like a beach house here where I'm gonna advertise myself to do some catering for them. So they do like short accommodations for people throughout the summertime. I'd be down to do it that way. What happens in August? Uh, that's just the timeline that I gave myself to make enough money from this and then otherwise that would be like the six month mark of me streaming like this full time. So I gave myself like half a year to see if this works. And yes, I love fast paced kitchens. If you don't love fast paced kitchens, you're probably not a very good cook to be honest because every kitchen is fast paced when it's busy. I don't like when it's slow because then people get unproductive and you actually start to make more mistakes. Helicopter, spaghetti and meatballs, just like a healthy version. I'm glad you're here. I know Finster, I thought that would be such a good little part-time job. And how many people can the house fit? Yeah, the house can fit up to 10 people. So I could be cooking for quite a bit of people if, if they do want me to. I mean, I could even just prep a bunch of stuff and just leave it in the fridge for them to heat up if they want it that way too, instead of me being there. Oh, now we really broke it, guys. <laughs> Still works. Did I add the garlic? I did. Okay, here's like a little roasty part of the garlic. I just broke it up.
Do I add these on YouTube? I do. So I just directly upload my streams to YouTube. I don't actually edit them at all. But I mean, the good thing is that you can kind of fast forward through, right? Yeah, I'm, I'm not trying to be a YouTube star at all, guys. Okay, I think I'm just going to squish these. Oh, now we lost the spring and everything in our scooper. We're falling apart, guys. But we don't want any of our meatballs to touch on the pan or else they won't cook as good. <laughs> like, what is this now? It's okay, chosen one. Don't feel bad. A lot of people don't like check out streamers channel pages, but that's where we put all of the good stuff that you guys should know or need to know or want to know. Helicopter, I love your little tidbits. Your little like sneaky fun facts. Squeeze some juice out of the onions and tomatoes when you cook kebabs. I like it. That way it browns up better, I'm sure. I know the sauce is simmering. I think I'm going to turn it down just a bit after I finish this bowl off and work on the next sheet. Touch more meat in this one. Yeah, honestly, you guys would think that these meatballs would fall apart or something by us not packing them, but I promise they don't and they cook up so nice. Okay, so our oven went off for the squash. So I'm gonna put those in right now and get them starting. Just give a little stir here and then turn down our tomato sauce a little bit as well. It was at five. So let's go to three. Yeah, we still have another bowl of meat and I might have to adjust the oven racks. Let me see. Oh no, we good guys. Okay, let's do 20 minutes and then I'll rotate those trays just cause there is two. I mean, I have it on convection, but usually works better if you do rotate. Oh, they are chunky meatballs, it's true. They're not spicy, but they're chunky. Oh, impossible. Yeah, there's no dessert on the menu tonight. I was thinking about it, but we had some pretty good desserts on the weekend for Easter, and we still have some mini eggs left over and some Reese eggs, so I'm not gonna make anything until those are gone. Trying to go a little bit healthier with this meal tonight, even though it's like covered in cheese. Cheese is health. It's true. Aw, oh, thank you, Nim. Seriously. You don't have to plug that stuff. But I see what you're doing there. You're working for that mod status. Yeah, any newbies in here, hit that follow button and then you will get notified when I go live so you won't miss a thing. It's kind of true, Chosen One. I mean, typically it should taste better if someone else makes it for you, but I've had some pretty uh, terrible dinners at some restaurants. 
I guess you should say food tastes better when you trust who's making it for you. I mean, I try not to be picky, but sometimes it's just too terrible. Yeah, exactly, Finster. There was no love. What were they thinking? Who's here? <laughs> Definitely is smelling garlicky in here. You made chicken chow mein. That's amazing helicopter. Is that something that's out of your comfort zone? Man, how is that basic? Basic is like macaroni out of a box. And plus, I love French toast. Look, his and hers maple syrups. What? Okay, guys, so story time. Some of you probably don't know, but my boyfriend, Sam, his parents live in Ontario and they actually just tapped all of the maple trees in their backyard. And we already have about 250 mils each of maple syrup that they've cooked off. And this was only from the past, what Sammy, like three days, four days. So they have, I think 13 buckets tapped on their trees and they've already cooked that much maple syrup. That's amazing. Like you never know, right? You never know if you don't test something out. So they just decided one day, okay, let's see if we can tap it and see what happens. Now they're just like bathing in maple syrup. Yeah, maple syrup and butter, so good. Hello. How are you? Good, how are you? Good. <laughs> Florida only has oranges. Yeah, but we don't have those. I guess that's why there's trading involved, hey? Okay, we might have too much meatballs for our pans. We'll see, guys. Yeah, Florida key lime pie. Good one, Finster. I think that might be one of the desserts coming up this week is something limey. I just bought a new fresh bag of limes. Have I ever eaten steak tartare? I have, and I really enjoy it. Have you ever eaten it? Okay guys, we're nearing the end. It was common in your household have you told me whereabouts you're located or not yet? I'm guessing you're Danish. And if Loriander is still in here, you guys need to chat. Liverwurst. I don't think I've had liverwurst, Finster. You don't eat it anymore, impossible soul. How come? Okay, your parents are Polish. 
I mean, my parent, my mom's parents are Polish too, but I don't think they ever ate that. They were like farmer Polish. Okay, we have two left. Just have to do a little bit of spreading out action afterwards. This one's gonna be a mini one. Or we're just gonna take a little bit from another ball. Do it that way. Done, guys. Donezos. Menudo. I haven't chosen one. I love all these crazy questions you guys are asking me. And I've never eaten tripe either. I honestly, I don't know if I would be able to eat it. I'm not a huge fan of like rubbery textured foods or like really chewy stuff. Like when I was younger, like way, way younger, I would literally pick out like all of the fat and gristle off the bacon and like only eat the meat part. Cause I thought everything else was like gross and now there's not a chance I would do that. Okay, all of the balls <laughs> have been arranged. Yeah, that's the only way I would like eat tripe is probably in a soup of sorts. But even then, like, I really don't know if I would be able to. Yeah, especially if it's flavorless, Finster. Like, why would you want to? Hey guys, meaty balls are done. These will go in the oven whenever the squash is like almost done because these will only bake for about 10 to 15 minutes. And then they're good to go. So we'll leave our dried herbs out for now, just in case we have to touch up the tomato sauce with anything at all. Give this a stir just to make sure it's not sticking. And lastly, we have to just prep up our Caesar salad. We're almost there. What's the most expensive food I've ever tried? I mean, I have eaten fresh truffles, so I know that's definitely up there. And I've had caviar. I've had Iberico ham, which is really expensive too. Obviously, none of these things I've eaten in large amounts though, just because it is so expensive and they wouldn't be as delicious if you ate them all the time, right? I think that's the good part about them being expensive is it makes it special still. Is there anything I want to try that I haven't tried? That's a good question. I mean, there's definitely a few meats and stuff I haven't tried. I've tried quite a few birds. Never eaten pheasant. I think you can eat kangaroo. Yep. Yeah, you can eat kangaroo. I haven't tried that. I mean, I'd be down to really try anything once and see how it is. But I've, I've eaten alligator. That was pretty cool. It was like a very chewy version of chicken or pork. Hey guys, the bag of kale is coming out. 
Posh. Posh, you're not supposed to be. <laughs> Was she a no-show? All of the animals that people eat, I know, right? We're savage. Okay, so this kale I just picked from our garden. Quite quite a bit of it. I mean, the leaves are getting huge. And before they start to turn yellow, I was like, well, I might as well pick them today. So we got this bunch here that we have to wash up. Excuse me. I had a burp, it's allowed. <laughs> Polish. The timer is counting down. This is called Scarlet Kale. So it's really nice and purple. It's beautiful. I forget what this one is called, but it's so, so cool. It's almost like a frisé version of kale, guys. So a lot less chewy than something like the very curly type. And then this is another type of kale, which I don't know the name of it yet, but I'll probably be bringing in a notebook to the farm so I can remember all of the stuff that she tells me. I know paparazzi's here. I told Sammy to start playing around with the camera just so I can get like more professional photos. So let's use the bulk of this salad as kale and then we'll just buff it out with some romaine after that. Okay, so first thing we gotta do with our kale is zip the stems out because those are the really tough parts. This does look really nice and colorful though, I have to say. So wherever the stem is, just hold it with one hand and then just go along it and zip it off. And then you end up with just the leaves. And everything still stays nicely together. Does my boyfriend like my food? Ask him to be honest. I mean, he was a chef for 15 years and he actually taught me a lot of stuff that I know. So do you like my food? Terrible. <laughs> Yeah, he's still with her. That's the answer, says Polsh. It's true. <laughs> yeah, it's true. If a chef can be with another chef and still like their food, I think I think that means I'm all right. You're going strong. I mean, you're yeah. Yeah, we actually met working in a kitchen together. Okay, let's do purple ones next. It's gonna be the most colorful Caesar salad ever. And we are gonna be washing all this stuff, guys. I know we wash it at the farm already, but I'm gonna do it again. The question is who cooks better? I know, it's actually a tough question. Sam knows like a lot more butchery and stuff like that than I do. And he's really good with a smoker and like charcoal grills. But he always says that I am more creative than him. But like I said, he taught me a lot of stuff that I know now, so some of his stuff has for sure rubbed off on me. Can I do an entire stream with food of the same color? I like it, Finster. That's a good one. I'd be down.
what color should we do? That's the question. I think green would be like too easy, hey? Purple would be interesting. Yeah, that would look so cool. Lilink, what am I cooking? So we're doing a version of spaghetti and meatballs today, but we're doing squash. So spaghetti squash instead of the pasta. And right now I'm just putting together a Caesar salad using some kale. It looks moldy, not even a chance. It's actually like four or five different kinds of kale, if you guys can see here. But it's definitely not moldy. We actually just picked these last Thursday. <laughs> Fresh out of the ground. So don't even give me that. Okay, these are seriously my favorite. They remind me of like seaweed in the water or something. Doesn't look like it would be a kale. And I think I'll keep those on the stem for us to wash and then I'll take it off after just so it doesn't get super messy in the salad spinner. Show Doggo, please. Doggo, come here. Come here. Are you nice? Come here. Are you good man? Here, pick up this. You like kale stems? That's good stuff. Okay, let's see. It's good stuff, she says, guys. Another thing that Doggo eats. Good fibers. Eat your veggies. <laughs> They're so fluffy. It's true, Finn. Yeah, she only eats the kale stem. She won't touch the leaves because it's like too chewy and I think it gets just stuck in her mouth. Vegan doggo, not a chance. <laughs> if it's green, she avoids it. That's hilarious, Polish. I love how picky some dogs are. She loves bread. Yeah, cause it's sweet. Hey guys, that was our timer for our squash. So I'm just gonna turn this up and grab a little peek. See how soft they're getting so far. It doesn't seem like they're too soft yet. I mean, that was only 20 minutes. So like I said, I'm just gonna rotate the trays And then let's do 15 minutes more. Aren't I supposed to chop the veggies? I will be in a sec. I just need to wash them up first. And then we're going to go interstellar. Last time we did interstellar kale finster, it went flying. I don't know if you were there for that one. There was just like kale everywhere. It was a blast though. Wash off the mold. Get out of here, Mike. I want none of that. No negativity today. Let's go. Ready, hold on, hold on, ready for the job. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now 
We're gonna just take that out. Oh god, it's everywhere. It's still going everywhere. And we're just gonna quickly wash the other crazy little furry ones. And spin it out. What is it, alien technology? A yes? I said we were going interstellar. It is also known as a salad spinner. It's just really old school. The ones they make these days do not last this long. <laughs> so the salad spinner helps to dry off your veggies after you wash them. So it just spins all of the water off. Really, really useful if you eat a lot of lettuce or wash a lot of vegetables. Hey guys, these are getting zipped off and it's time for the Ebola bowl. You're stuck in the 1950s. I think that thing might be from the 70s, so you're not too far behind there. The early fidget spinner. <laughs> it could be. It's so true. You guys are genius. Let's see where they got the ideas from now. Okay, so all I'm doing is just tearing up the kale into this bowl. And then the important thing we have to do for this Caesar salad so that it's not really chewy is we are going to massage the kale with some olive oil. And then that kind of breaks up the fibers on the outsides of the leaves and makes it less chewy. I think these bigger pieces I'm going to actually chop. So we're just going to lay them out in a layer. And then do nice thin strips. And it may or may not fly everywhere. Obviously, if the pieces are like really small already, you don't have to cut them down any further. These ones, though, we'll definitely have to cut. And we're just going to also cut it in half first and then fold it over onto itself. And it just makes it easier to chop it that way. It's going to be the most colorful Caesar salad. Just to make sure I'm not cooking the dog. No, I'm not cooking the dog, guys. Not a thing. Yeah, exactly, Finster. How dare you even say that? This is the dog stream. It's not even my stream, guys. What am I cooking in the saucepan? That is a tomato sauce. Just really simple, one carrot, half an onion, and two cans of tomatoes, a little bit of dried basil as well. Obviously use fresh basil if you have it. OK, 
Okay, our bowl is getting full. Don't know if we're gonna actually need the romaine today. The rest of the kale here on the board is kind of just smaller pieces. I'm just keeping it bunched up so I can cut it up easier. Done and done. There's now kale everywhere. What? Yes. I've been problems. Sauce in a saucepan, mind blown. I know, right? I mean, you asked the question. Configura, hello. Yes, Posh. Screw that woman. On to the next one. She ain't worth your time. How often do I do cooking streams? Monday to Friday. Hey guys, so like I said, let's just drizz a little bit of olive oil. You don't need a ton here. And then we're just gonna kind of squish the kale together with our hands. And this is gonna break up all those tough fibers and make it a lot more pleasant to eat. A lot of restaurants do not do this step and then you're eating the salad and you just feel like a rabbit because you're chewing it forever. Configura, thank you for the follow and welcome. Hope your day is well. <laughs> Posh. Yeah, it's the pre-chew. Exactly, Finn. Just like helping you out. But you can see how it's starting to turn like a little bit of a darker color. That means we're doing it right. And it honestly, it feels softer already. So most people would think that using like lemon juice or something would help this, but actually oil is the proper thing to use. Give it like a good firm little massage. I think that's good. And then I'm just gonna add in, I'm still gonna add in some chopped romaine. Just for some extra crunch, I think, more than anything. But you can see how this looks now. So the leaves have gotten darker and they are more soft feeling. Doing good. Chili oil, I know that would be so good. Why not, Polsh? Don't mind me, just oven things. Sauce is getting there, guys. Almost that time, it's 5.30. Should be eating in at least half an hour or less. Yes. 
Yes, on dog. Twitch Prime for the win. Oh, and thank you for the cheer, Omdog. I appreciate that. Some extra little biddies. Okay, so just a couple leaves of romaine. Cut that off. And then obviously we're just going to rip off whatever pieces are kind of brown and yucky looking on the end. I'm gonna grill that lettuce. Good question, Polish. I don't know, like, I, can, I don't think I can physically grill any more romaine lettuce in my life. I've done it too many times in restaurants and just need some time away from that. But seriously, it is good. It's a great way to serve Caesar salad. Give some extra flavor in there. Yeah, do it, Polish. I would try to get like the smaller heads of romaine if you're gonna do that. Cause they're a lot more firm compared to these leaves where this side would like burn a lot faster. Yeah, romaine hearts. So all we're gonna do is layer up our leaves and same as the kale. Cut them in half and then flip them over. And then we're just kind of gonna shred them, I think. A little bit thinner. And that should mix in with the kale nicely. Polish, have you ever done an oil-based Caesar dressing instead of like a mayo-based one? That's always good too. Hey, romaine, crushed. All you get is romaine hearts. That's hilarious. Yeah, it's true guys. There is some delay. Can't help it yet. Less than a month until it's fixed. It's just the way it is. It's true, Finster. Tell him. Okay. Squash check again. It link with the follow. Thank you. Okay, so let's check this stuff out. See it is turning brown on the outsides a little bit. This has been the longest meal prep. Yeah, it's true, but I go through everything, don't I? Let's just flip one of these over so you can see how steamy it is. I actually think, so we're just gonna flake it like that and I think we're done. There's our spaghetti. So I'm going to take the other tray out and I'll pop the meatballs in 
And we're almost there, guys. But I am going to keep this flipped over just so it stays warm. And then we'll scoop it out later on when we go to serve it. You fell asleep and we still haven't eaten. Yep. Get used to it. <laughs> <laughs> You missed a lot of stuff though. Now you don't even know what we're doing. Okay, meaty balls going in. Do nine minutes and then flip the tray. I think that's a good time. So let's dress our salad next. So that's done. And then all we have to do is quickly blend up our tomato sauce if needed. It's pretty chunky still. Guys, I am not making the dressing today. I would, but we still have some deadly Renee's dressing. Proudly Canadian. You should know this Finster. And no, he's not snoring on the couch. He's actually just started playing up some Fortnite as we speak. You're ready for the Wellington vid? Yeah, you should go back and look at it. A strategic nap. I know, how can you beat Renee is honestly. The only thing I might add is just a little bit of lemon zest and juice. Just because the kale is a little bit bitter compared to romaine. Yeah, Fortnite. I know, it's such a good game. I don't play it, but I definitely like to watch it. So let's start with a smaller amount of dressing. And then obviously we can bump it up if we need it, but I hate when Caesar salad is like overdressed and just mushy and soupy almost. So let's not. Kale's trying to run everywhere still. It's alive. Okay, touch more dressing. You can only eat ranch dressing. I know lots of people are super picky about their salad dressing types. How come you don't like Caesar though? Is it just like the more funky earthy taste of it? Try a piece. Okay, just a touch more, and I, I will have to add some salt to this as well, and as well as the lemon.
is through a, cla- a cow's flesh. <laughs> That's a great salad. Emotional can't make friends with salad. It's okay. It's fair, bud. It's fair. Okay, now we got to cut our lemon in half. Perfection. Get a squeeze in there, freshen things up. And like I said, just some salt and pepper, and then we'll garnish with the croutons. I'm not gonna put any parm into here because we do have it in the meatballs. And then I'm thinking I wanna put in some fresh matzah in with the tomato sauce and meatballs and squash. Cause that sounds delicious to me. Hextum, thank you. You only did it for the likes. I mean, to each their own. Everyone's entitled to their own opinion and what they like to eat. Posh, what do you think? Finster, Posh is confused about what we're making right now. She's very intrigued. She's like, I've never seen this kind of Caesar salad before. And I think we have hit happiness. Take a fork full. Mm-hmm. Had to kick up the Renee's a little bit, guys. And then the cruttons. Homemade cruttons for the win. This is like the carb of our dinner tonight, so we'll put quite a bit on there. And we'll leave the rest on the side. <laughs> yeah, that's what she's thinking. Hey, hey, hey. What? Posh, thank you for the sub, dude. I thought you said you couldn't. You're crazy. Seriously, thanks, man. It's always good chatting about food with ya. Welcome to the squad. Don't forget about your onion. Now we should have two more new emotes in the upcoming weeks here. Fill it with spaghetti. Quick little cleanup. And let's blend our sauce. Mr. Niner, if you're still in here, you no longer have to feel the blender staring at you. You can now stare at it while it does something for once. And I'm just gonna go quickly to the bathroom and I'll be right back. I'll deal with the meatballs at that time.
Hey guys, I'm here. Do I ever do vegetarian? Yeah, I used to do meatless Mondays. Haven't done them for about a month now, probably. So let's feel these meatballs. They actually look like they're cooking really nicely in the oven. So I'm going to do about two more minutes and call it a day. Or I just turn the oven off and blend up the sauce and call it a day. Your girlfriend's vegetarian. I mean, I can send you some recipes that I did before for sure. Because they were delicious. Okay, I'm just going to go pour this in the sink. Just in case it splashed, which it didn't. So we're good. And then always be really careful when you're blending hot stuff, guys. Make sure your lid's on tight and that this little guy is stuck in its spot. <laughs> Shut <laughs> the front door. We're shocked. <laughs> and just start at a low speed and turn it up from there. It's thick. Ready for the steam? You need sound effects. Oh, polish. Okay. You get to bed then, sir. Seriously, thank you again for the sub. Welcome to the squad. It's always good having you in here. Okay, let's do a quick taste of this. And then it's time to plate up. Probably just needs a bunch of salt. Yep. And this is up to you, but you can add a little bit of sugar or sweetener if you want. Just helps to contrast the tomato flavor, which is a little bit more acidic. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Exactly emotional. You're fitting right in with us. Taste test. We're there, guys. Okay, so squash is still steaming. That is great. 
I am going to take the meatballs out right now. They look fab. Smell even better. So it's time to make our veggie spaghetti. Oh, hello, Kevin. Good to see you in here. Yeah, you're right on time. So literally all we have to do is just pull our squash away from the side. And you get little spaghetti strands. So we didn't overcook this either, which is great for us. Otherwise it would be mushy and not really spaghetti texture. So that's what it looks like when you pull it. Get this camera to focus, but I don't know if it will because of the steam. Oh, we almost got it. Close enough though. And then as you eat, you can just keep pulling it away until you get to the skin. Or you can choose to just take out all of the flesh to start with and just eat it in your bowl. But I'm going to do it a little bit different and just serve it like this in the little squash skin. The day was good, man. How was yours? The weather actually turned out to be pretty nice. I'm just going over to grab a little bit of the tomato sauce and that's going on next. And we'll just put a couple of the meatballs on top. Like so, I think it's looking good guys. Our little healthy spaghetti and meatballs. <laughs> what is this? Nut in hand, what are you doing? That's always a good feeling when you get 95 on a test that you thought you failed like yes I'm actually okay I'm gonna make it through life now all I'm doing is taking some of our soft matzo and kind of just studying it in the tomato sauce so it melts really slowly because we're sick like that If you want, you can garnish with fresh basil, but I didn't feel like buying one huge pack just to garnish with because I thought it would go bad within a week. So I have nothing else planned to use with the basil. So this is what we're gonna do tonight and then keeping the salad nice and fresh and green. So let me just take a quick photo of this, guys. Yeah, that's a terrible choice, nut in hand, honestly. I've made that mistake too many times as well. But seriously, welcome. And emotional, thank you for the follow.
Okay, we here, guys. We are here. Meatball for the pup. Now nah, there's too much stuff in there for her to eat. Nut and hand, thank you as well for the follow. Welcome. Grabbing a piece of meatball right now with some sauce and some squash, just like that. Works pretty well, I must say. I wouldn't say this is like a carbless meal, obviously, because of all the cheese, but it's definitely lower in carbs than pasta. Mm-hmm. See, I told you guys the meatball would be garlicky enough on its own. It has like the perfect amount of roasted garlic in it to just kind of spruce everything else up. Which is why we kept the squash plain, just oil, salt, and pepper. The sauce was just onion and carrot for flavor, as well as a little bit of dried basil. And then the meatballs gave everything else the flavor. So once again, really, really delicious. Super pumped about this. We are gonna go munch on this now. I'm not going to eat the salad with you guys because it's just a Caesar salad. Same old, all I did was sub out most of the romaine for kale instead and showed you guys how to process it properly so it's not disgusting when you eat it because i know people hate kale and that is it guys so all you newbies we have a discord channel and the server invite link is on my channel page so feel free to get in there with us just click on the link and then I'm also pretty active on Instagram. So if you click the Instagram link on my channel page as well, you will see pretty much my portfolio and everything that I like to cook. So hope you all have a great night and I will be back tomorrow. The schedule is also on my channel page if you're wondering. And that is it guys. So thanks again. Got a couple new subs, a couple new follows and I'm going to call it a day. Good night, everyone. You want me to call you bird? Sounds good. Bye, Finster. Thanks for being here.